about wellness in a really, really big way. Obviously, we've, wellness has been a topic for a long time. And, uh, but we're thinking that if 2020 has to have one silver lining, the fact that we're more aware than ever of physical and emotional wellness allows us to tee up a perfect conversation here. So we have some amazing guests here today, but before I get into that, sponsored by the one and only Mr. Steam and here to talk about Mr. Steam will be Martha Orellana because you know we, we love our Martha. Now we have a special guest here today that uh, um, I met personally here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. So that's a long story of pain and stress and agony and all of that. And that's physical therapist Don Cox, who owns an amazing holistic uh, functional manual therapy place here in town called Prana, but she'll tell us all about that in a minute. And uh, I'm a big fan of those guys. And to talk about design and how it impacts wellness is our very own uh, interior designer on the show today is Jana Donahue. And is it, is it Jana Ray? Because your Facebook always says Jana Ray. Do you go by that? It's my middle name. Ray is my middle name. Yeah. But it's such a cool thing. It's like your stage name. And since you've got, look at that. Look at the whole look. I like that. It's my stage name. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's your Taylor, Taylor Swifty thing you've got going on over here. It's actually better, I think. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Let's just, let's just cement that right now. Much better. Much, Much better. better. Much better. <laughs> So guys, uh, uh, we're just gonna hop right in and uh, give you guys a chance to uh, introduce yourselves very quickly. Why don't we start with Dawn? That's the order I have you on my screen. So, hey, take it away. Hey. How are you doing out there? My name's Dawn Cox and yes, as Veronica said, um, I'm a physical therapist, but I own Prana Functional Manual Therapy in downtown Lancaster. And we have a local storefront, but a global reach. We can do consulting anywhere. But um, just the difference between your traditional physical therapist can get 70% of the population better. A functional ma manual therapist, the way we treat, the way our paradigm goes, we get the other 30. And the way we do it is through mechanical, neuromuscular, and motor control. Not to get too into it, but just so you know, we can be your massage therapist, your chiropractor, your coach, your personal trainer. Um, so that we have to speak the same language and work collaborative, collaboratively with some people that you may already see, not replace them. But we, we do everything from mechanical, meaning, oh, does the joint and soft tissue move to neuromuscular, it's m, m therapy, we call it, neuromuscular, which is like, okay, the strength and can a muscle recruit through the range, can it um, be strong at the end range? However, today we're talking about motor control, which most of us call posture. It's kind of how we do stuff. Cool. And I want to just show you the best way now that we have to do some things. I'll speak in ideals, and I know there's all reality and customization for each individual, and we'll try to meet in the middle. Well, more towards the ideal, hopefully. Very good. But your background, really, I mean, you're from New York. You, 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 you were, were you a dancer yourself, or did you just work on the physical therapy side? Veronica, you? I'm still a dancer. Hello. <laughs> no one tells me this. I did not I still, know that. I still dance, but... um. Okay. When my professional dancers that I worked with on Broadway in New York, um, and they would ask me that question, I would stumble a little bit, but then they validate me and said, Dawn, you're still a dancer, even though I didn't really get paid for it as a profession. It was always my outlet um, for, you know, my whole life. And I still am part of an adult hip hop group. So yeah, I'm still a dancer. But with them, and then everything from treating athletes to Broadway dancers to pop stars to uh, people in warehouses or people like you and me that want to pick up our kids and not injure our back or just get things, you know, our turkey out of the oven um, every, and everything in between. What if I want to dance when I take the turkey out? Of well, then you would probably be living in my house because that's how that <laughs> I can yeah. come right over. <laughs> and that would be an M and T, I think. It's, you you got to get the yeah, turkey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. wear socks if you do that, it works better. And then if you slip and fall, I can just treat you right there. So no big <laughs> <laughs> nice. It's, She's got you covered. Telling you, holistic, right? This is the kind of stuff we want. This is, yeah, I'm, I'm excited yeah. about this. Interesting, so, though, we try to tap in because we're trying to revolutionize why and how you would access physical therapy. We want everyone to come like you do your dentist or your car, and we want to analyze and assess you because it's functional manual therapy as a physical therapist. It's so, you know, from the big foot to the top of the cranium to the top of the head, 
So we would rather everyone come in for, you know, every three months for four visits, maybe two, so that we can prevent injury. So it may, it may sound like I'm trying to, you know, make myself obsolete, but we were, we're in the business of preventing injury. And of course, if an injury happens, we can treat that too. Yeah, that's how it should be. That's how it always should be, but yeah, not happening yet. Jana, next one yeah. up. Hello, I'm Jana Donahoe or Jana Ray Donahoe. Or my stage name, Jana Ray, I like that a lot better. <laughs> Uh, I am an interior designer at Jana Donahoe Designs. I have been an interior designer for about 15 years, seven years on my own. Um, I am in North Carolina. I'm an East Coast transplant. Originally grew up in Oregon, so that's been fun uh, learning all the East Coast stuff out here. And I'm a bit of a exercise junkie, which is kind of why I'm here today. <laughs> well, you combine both. <laughs> what what did you do before you were an interior designer? Was that was that always the vision, or or do you uh, have? A no, I actually originally started out school uh, wanting to be a veterinarian, so quite three sixty. <laughs> it's actually kind of the same thing. It's it's working with animals sometimes. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah, that is true. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, think so. I didn't say that. Did I, just, I did not say that. Yeah. And, and, and there's sedatives nearby. Is there something like that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. It's horrible. All that cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why we like you. <laughs> yeah. This combination of cocktails <laughs> and Peloton. I I really need to get to the bottom of that. It, it, I think it works for everybody. And and smoothly, I have left the uh, last self intro up to Martha because we're going to move from that self intro. We want to hear your background story, Martha. I'm telling you right now, uh, and 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 then we'll let you tell us a little bit about Mr. Steam too while you're at it. Well, I heard the word cocktail and I heard the word PT, and I'm like, okay, that's me. <laughs> Let's just get started, Dawn. I can't wait because I've I've been working from home for uh, eighty percent of the time now. And it's just the chairs and the sitting and the arms is just, so I, I can't wait to get started on, on that. And uh, Jana, I, I'd love to see some of the stuff that you've done with, with, with uh, uh, taking a living in, in, and making it better uh, just for, from, from the experience of being at home and how you can change it. So uh, my name is Martha Romana. I've only been doing, uh, I have only been with Mr. Steam, not doing Mr. Steam, but, uh, uh, with Mr. Steam since uh, it was uh, really became a brand in 1985. Uh, so at that point, it was just a, a nothing in, in our little company. It's uh, our, our main, the, the company is actually Sussman Automatic. And we had this little brand called Mr. Steam. And uh, they tapped me when I was very young and very foolish to five. do something with this. <laughs> and uh, so I first had to learn everything about plumbing. Like, what? what? What do you do with plumbing? You just call a plumber. No, well, because Mr. Steam requires plumbing. And I had to find out about electrical. And I had to find out about the whole plumbing distribution, the kitchen and bath industry, and the designers. So throughout the years, I really uh, became entrenched into uh, the, the field that I, through, through uh, meeting uh, uh, Veronica, I really blame her for making me spend so much money on the remodel of my place. <laughs> but you know what? It was absolutely worth it. Uh, I'll, I'll take that. Uh, you will take that. <laughs> Put it back in the economy. And I think that's a, Before you go on, Martha, did you ever have a dream of being something other than Mrs. Steam? Because I actually, I wanted to work for CNN and be a producer. That was my dream, communications. I had no, well, we need help with our productions here for Design on Cut, so it's not too late. Come on. I, I it. It. It, it's funny, though, because sometimes we do these things like, oh, I am producing, right? Yep, there you go. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, that, that was my, my and then I, I never left. Actually, I, I was working my way through college uh, when I was working for Sussman, and I haven't left. So that's uh, the story of, of, of how I got into this business. It was really serendipity. And I, I, I use that word for, for many, many reasons. Uh, it was just one sequence of events that led to uh, another sequence of events. Uh, and I was traveling, um, uh, we were gonna do a big show for many years ago uh, in Mexico. And I, I got on a plane and we were able to get on a plane. And I just had a, I landed and I had a sore throat. And I said, oh my God, how am I gonna do this 
for three, four days, and I, I wasn't feeling well. They had a steam in, in the hotel I was staying in. So I went to the steam room, and I spent on and off probably about an hour. And by the time I, I got up the next morning, I was cured. And I said, you know what? This thing is really real, and it really works for me. And it's, I, I got to get the message across. So I've been uh, uh, really evangelical about this and uh, just wanted to make sure that for so many reasons on so many levels, and we'll talk about some of that, uh, it is, is so, it's good for you. You know, I, I think you can see our tagline, Feel Good Inc. And it, it's true. It's, it's, I, I feel so good about being able to say, why shouldn't everybody? And it's not a question of spending millions of dollars on, on, on a renovation. You really can do it. With, what's your health worth to you, right? It really comes down to that. What, what do you value? Uh, if you're in the process of remodeling, the, uh, you can't go to the spa right now, right? So here, here's an opportunity to do that. Uh, any exactly design, right. any size, we, 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 we could probably accommodate you on that. Yeah. Yeah. We're love By the way, Jeffrey Johnson says hi, I have to say, and Michelle Alfano <laughs> says hi. All you, all you, all you saying. <laughs> Her fans and followers are all chiming in. <laughs> What would Mr. Steen what? be without you're Martha? Getting, you get into this group and then you just can't help but loving people and you get to know them and they become your extended family. Well, so it's reciprocal hope. though. And but this makes you very, very special in this industry is, you know, people kind of connect the dots. So you, you, you did good. You did good, sister, <laughs> since 2012 and, go, and continuing. So do you want to you talk a little bit about Mr. Steam? Do you want to show us some visuals? Because sure, I know, sure. Yeah. And I know there are a lot of questions because people say, whoa, what is that? So yeah. I want to I just bring it down to you that every single home, and I think, Dawn, you had asked me a question about that. Every single home can possibly have a, a, uh, a, a Mr. Steam in, in, in their home. And it really is about, uh, of course, bringing uh, steam and, and design uh, and mostly uh, wellness to, to, to your home. And I think we, we talked about uh, the company a little bit. The company that, that uh, as I said, is Sussman. We've only been in business since 1917. So we know a little thing or two about how to make water boil. We make boilers for the U.S. Navy. We do, we've done the Kennedy Space Center. We've done the CDC. Chances are if you're in the hospital and you're being operated on, the autoclave that's sterilizing the instruments is run by, by a, a Sussman boiler. So we really know how, how to make water boil. Uh, and uh, really no one knows more about steam that, 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 than we do. Uh, so I wanna talk about wellness in general, right? Why does wellness matter? I think we've ever had days like this, right? <laughs> like yesterday. I guess. Or, <laughs> right? Or working from home, right? You're juggling the phones, the kids, the, 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 the actual incoming calls, the emails. So wh wh what do you do? Uh, everybody seems to be getting uh, overloaded. I think there's an emotional quotient that, that, that people aren't prepared during this uh, uh, crisis that, that we go on the pandemic. Uh, so sometimes you just have to hit the pause button, right? Once you do that, you can create an environment wow. for yourself, right? Mm. You, you want to feel comfortable, okay. right? You want to feel safe. You want to know that the home is the place that, that you can retreat to. And, and that's where we are most of the time now, right? So from a design standpoint, uh, you're looking at Jana incorporating the biophilic uh, ideas, the feng shui. And of course now, well, a lot of it is, is living in place. And I, that, that's a whole CU course that, 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 that we teach uh, that we can get into another time. And they're just basic elements of, of, of wellness that, that are involved in, in creating that atmosphere, right? It has to do with lighting, air purification, color selection. Well, it just doesn't like, like me staying there. Smart technology, uh, water filtration, accessibility, voice activation, spa therapies, and steam therapies we're going to talk about. So the, the sad thing is that we now spend 90% of our time indoors. Uh, the other thing is that in California right now, we're spending 100% of our time indoors because the air quality is so bad outside with all the fires that are going on. Uh, so we need to melt the stress away. Uh, designing can help. Uh, and of course, steam therapy has been around for, for, for thousands of years. Uh, it's been called uh, Roman baths, Turkish baths, hammams. Any civilization has always had steam in their makeup because 
it's obviously inherently good for you. It's uh, great for, for respiratory health. Uh, more than ever now, if you have a cold, if you have a sinus infections, we have allergies, steam is absolutely the best thing for that. It enhances relaxation and sleep, right? If you can't sleep and you wake up the next day, give it up, go back, right? It, it combats the, the cold and flu symptoms. Right now, who wouldn't want this in their home, right? And overall, uh, detox and, and removes impurities and enhances a uh, uh, sense of, of overall wellness. So the question is, uh, why isn't this uh, uh, automatically incorporated into your remodel plans, right? Uh, we're talking about physical wellness. And, and Don, you'll know about this. When you heat up the body, right? Your metabolism is increasing, right? You're increasing blood circulation. It's uh, boosting the, the metabolism. It invigorates the tired muscles. It prepares you for uh, if you want to go running or, 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 or jogging or doing the, the six mile, uh, the six hour uh, uh, Peloton Jana, right? Uh, it removes lactic acid from overworked muscles. The heat itself increases muscular flexibility. Dawn, you got to get one of these. Uh, and it does burn uh, oh. 150 calories. <laughs> Um, Wait a minute, it burns 150 calories? I didn't yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I, I always like to put a caveat on that. Sorry about that. But, <laughs> no, no, no. but back up. The minute you start drinking water so again, 10 water. hours a day, and I would be right as rain. This is great. I had no idea. You could be done with this on Sunday. I'm starting install tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, the, the only caveat on that is that you have to replenish the water, right? That you put out uh, there. So I, I, no, I don't want to make uh, two balls of flames out there. Uh, right. and, and I, I think that the main difference between uh, what, what really truly separates steam from any other therapies out there, I think is the respiratory health angle, because we are mostly water. <laughs> it opens up the air sacs in your lungs. It actually allows you to breathe better. Uh, it promotes, uh, 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 you know, uh, opens up the nasal passages when you have allergies, right? It's uh, uh, great for sinus drainage. <laughs> you know, you can actually... Uh, <clears throat> get rid of uh, 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 sinus issues uh, and bronchial secretions, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, my, my, my partner uh, in crime, uh, Dan, uh, he's asthmatic and he actually had to move. He bought a new house and he didn't have a steam bath while he was redoing, redecorating his home. And for about three months, he said, I never had so many colds. He had a, probably about four colds in, in a three month span because he didn't have steam. And now he has his steam back and he's just like, I'm done. <laughs> no cold's going to get me. Uh, and no asthmatic attacks or anything like that. It actually is soothing for the throat and uh, it acts as a great expectorant. So uh, it's, uh, we're talking about holistic health, Jana, right? It's removing the toxins from the body. Uh, it uh, relieves the pain and discomfort of joints, right? It it's got, gets rid of all the, the, the metabolic and waste byproducts. Ladies, how much money do we spend in cosmetics a year? Billions. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. And guess what? I honestly, I wake up in the morning and I go to my steam and I put a little makeup on and that is it. I had, before I, start, I got my own steam, I had some acne issues. You go, you get a kit, a kit, a teenager's got acne issues. Make sure you put them in every day for 15, 20 minutes a day for three weeks no longer has uh, acne issues. It, it opens up the pores, gets rid of the, 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 the toxins and allows you to, your, your skin, your natural skin to, to, to come and glow. Uh, it, it is, uh, I think, one of the, the, the finest uh, benefits uh, of, of steam bathing as well. Um, you know, it's, it's a life-changing investment. What's your life, what's your wellness worth, right? We spend, 20% of all consumer spending on housing. I, I, I think that number is going to go up, Veronica. I'm not, I'm not sure uh, was going to be 25%, but in the next few months, we're going to get stats that that number has jumped up. Well, it just uh, came out too. Uh, we just had the, the NKBA talk yesterday with their newest KBMIs. Unrealistic, un crazy numbers. Yeah. And, and, and why wouldn't you invest in yourself on this, right? And yeah. whenever you call something wellness, and the, the truth is there's so many... Uh, 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 items of products out there that, that claim wellness, but are they really wellness? And so as a consumer, you have to be, and as a designer, you really have to be uh, discerning about what you put out there. Well, I can honestly tell you, 
steam is 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 truly a wellness product. It, it, get, it garners substantially higher uh, prices. Uh, you know, you you'll see that that this is is going to be coming more and more of an issue as as people are cocooning at home. It's a crazy world out there. I want my little fortress to be uh, natural and and clean and 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 give me my 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 very own special uh, uh, cocoon on that. So uh, here's some ideas. So, so some of the stuff we've done uh, with uh, here's a typical bathroom. <clears throat> that we have. So we decided let's give it an industrial uh, look without steam. Well, so uh, I think Don, you had asked me before, what does it take to go from here to an actual steam room? Not much, right? You go, you have to fill in the, the gap on top. You have to make the ceiling waterproof. You have to enclose the door. You got to put the 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 gent the linear the steam head and a control. Get the electricity and the water, and now you have a beautiful industrial with 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 steam. Uh, here's uh, we decided to give this poor ba ba badly needed uh, makeover to this bathroom, and we made wow. it a modern right. And guess what we missed? As in the old commercial, I could have had a V8. I could have had steam. And voila, you have steam. You can have enclosed the, 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 the entire upper area. This is waterproof. Uh, I always believe you should have a nice louver to get incoming fresh air when the door is closed after you've steamed. Mm -hmm. uh, you have your control, you have your steam head, and your generator is somewhere within 30, 40, 50 feet of the enclosure. It could be in, in, in a closet, it could be in an attic. And now you have steam. Uh, here's a, 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 a very badly <laughs> needed Where you get all these bad bathrooms? <laughs> I, 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 I love those. Um, and you know how the, the, we are now doing an entire wet room? You can do that and you can still do steam w within that. And uh, again, uh, make sure it's completely enclosed, waterproof materials. You got your control and you got your, your, your steam head. Your generator could be up in the attic, could be in a closet behind here, anywhere with, 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 with access to that. Uh, here's one that, that wasn't so bad, but needed some help and we helped it out. <laughs> That's the one I have in- I was gonna say, is that yours? <laughs> yeah. So, and, and here you go, right? Here's your regular shower door, right? This is a typical upgrade, but no, no steam. And this is all you had to do to go and get steam. Uh, here's one, oh, that we're all familiar with this glass box, right? Uh, and now we made it into a contemporary with a skylight too. So guess what? We were able to make that into a steam room as well. What did you do with the skylight there? What would you, or what would you do? What we, you, you actually make, make sure that, 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 that you covered the, the, the entire ceiling mm -hmm. is tiled, and that's a waterproof uh, ah. double pane of, and just completely sealed. And you, 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 you can do it. You want right. the, the light, and just be careful though. If, if it, this is probably, this is about nine, nine and a half feet height. We were able to do it, but if it's over that, it, it's, it, you would have to do a glass a uh, ceiling on that. You need a glass ceiling, yeah. And we know how we like to break Wait. glass ceilings. <laughs> yeah. No, we would never think of that. <laughs> so anyway, my, my, my quick spiel is over. I just want to let you know that, that uh, wellness uh, does matter. And what it's even matters more importantly is that we are now able to give, uh, oh, what, what's that spiel uh, about uh, the, those amazing uh, warm, comfy robes? Veronica, what are we doing about that? Oh yes, comfy robes. Everybody that's commenting today, does everybody everybody that makes a relevant comment so you can't just kind of throw Ooh, out random stuff. Uh, so if you're commenting cozy. relevant to the topic today, you too shall have a fluffy, sloppy, fluffy Mr. Steam robe. And we know where you are. They're really, they're all really pretty. And and Katie keeps texting me. She says, make sure I get one too. I'm commenting. <laughs> Like Katie, you're the host. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just distracted over here. I'm commenting because, you know, well, I posted that short little video of me flaunting around in my bathroom too, but actually it was just a gif. But anyway. <laughs> nice try. Very nice, nice try. <laughs> I just wanted to, you know, don't I look fabulous in the bathroom? So yeah, there you go. Yeah. But our guests, I think, are going to look even more fabulous. And we actually are getting some pretty cool comments. I do well, if you happen to get one, I would expect you to be on the October 8th 
program on emotional wellness. Fresh in said yeah. bathrobe. Careful what you ask I for. I love that. I, I love that. I think we can make that happen, right? Lots of people saying hi, by the way. Annie Moore, Shannon Jem, Jennifer Hyman, Jennifer Bertrand. Uh, so many great people. Marsha McDonald. Everybody's on here saying hello to you guys. So, yeah, you got, the, you got the whole gang out. So that's that's good. So, do we get to hop on over to Dawn? I know you're ready. Yeah. We'll we'll pop you on full screen, and Dawn is going to take us through some moves that allow us to get through our workday. You know, we have a tendency to work like our life depends on it, but we don't always exercise, move, or sit and stand like our life depends on it. And I think we have some work priorities there, right? So let's fix that and uh, uh, make that make that happen. Great. So what I want to just take you through first is we're talking about physical wellness, making ourselves a priority, and what can we do without, uh, you know, just our bodies. So what I normally say, probably in a couple hours, I'm going to try to say in 15 minutes. So I might be posing more questions than answers but we can figure out how to get more answers, whether you look me up or, you know, we do something else. But the thing that I want to do first is no matter what chair you're sitting in, because ideally standing is better for cardiovascular system and other things, but you could stand poorly too. But let's, again, when I'm talking about ideal versus reality, the reality is a lot of us have to sit on our computer and I could show you how to sit on a couch and whatnot, but today where I'm just gonna take you through getting some seated alignment that you can start using today. And then hopefully if we have time, I would like to take you through a couple of exercises, not recreating the wheel completely, but um, showing you some things that are important and basically move. And in case I forget, when you are doing exercises or um, you want a reminder, it's as simple as on your phone or computer, you have to give yourself a reminder like every 15 minutes to move or change position or something, okay? So the first thing I want to do, and um, Veronica, feel free to shout out if you can't see everything that I'm trying to do. Nope. Um, nope. I have my lovely assistant daughter, Georgia, here that can move it. Because I don't see the full screen, so I can't tell. Should yep. Right so, now, it looks great. Because I want good. everyone right now to be able to see from my shin to the top of my head. So I'm going to move back a little bit. And do you need and Georgia, to Georgia, you can tilt the camera forward a little bit. Um, and because today's a rainy day and not a sunny day, uh, the lighting isn't as bright as I wanted it to be, but let me know. Perfect. There we go. Perfect. perfect. Yeah. Okay. So if everyone will do this with me, it's up to you, but I'd like you to experience this. Really doing it. it in your body. <laughs> so the first thing you want to do, no matter what chair you're sitting on, it, the only thing you need from a chair is for it to go up and down and have casters on it. So rolling. What I'm sitting in now is a well-designed chair from all steel. It's, you know, you have your air on chairs. I highly recommend a well-designed chair but you also can sit poorly in a well-designed chair. Or you, if those of you who can't afford, you know, above $1,000 for a, a well-designed chair, you simply need to get a Costco chair, then spend your money on people like yourselves that design the whole room, and you can maybe cut a little cost in your chair if you sit yourself up well, okay? But the marriage of the two is the best, obviously, right? So the first thing you wanna do is get your chair, if you can, a little bit with your hips higher than your knees. Now, I'm not talking exaggerated. Um, and also, what we're, we're just gonna talk about our bodies right now, because when you add like your surface and your computer where it should be, we might go there, but that might take a little bit too much time. But no matter what you're trying to do, you wanna start with your body. Now. Georgia, can you tilt it down for my feet for just a moment, please? So one thing you wanna do with your feet, you want one foot slightly in front where your like ankle bone is underneath your knee. So if you could see this, that would be too far. You wanna right underneath your knee, but this is gonna be my back leg so you can see that front leg there. So you have a little straddle and stagger to create a little bit more base. Now let's talk about the base of the pelvis so you can bring it up a little bit, Georgia. Good. Everybody put their hands on their hips. We say hips, but it's really pelvis. And I want you to roll down and sit slumped. I'm sure none of you have ever done this before. You've never sit slumped or anything. And go ahead and put your head forward. Like that doesn't feel great, does it? You know, like let's feel the difference here. Feel how it can strain the neck a little bit, the backs a little bit. And, you're, and I love how Martha was talking about breathing. Breathing is your best exercise one can do, but you're not setting yourself up here for good breathing, are you? Because the diaphragm and everything else and your abdomen is just crunched. So first thing we're gonna do, put your hands on your hips and I want you to go the other way. Stick your belly way out, arch your back 
and shrug your shoulders. Now what most people do, they try to sit up tall or sit well and they'll overcorrect. All right, so then you can feel your shoulders are tense, your um, back extensors here have to be tight and then your hip flexors right in your hip crease are tight, okay? Let's find the middle. So put your hands back on your pelvis and just rock back and forth and see if you can uh, make sure too that you've got um, at least half of your thighs on the chair, okay? Then what you wanna do is imagine the two sits bones in your bottom, it's okay. You can touch them because you're gonna have to know where they are and just take some of the flesh from your bottom out to the side on each side. Too much work. Yes. <laughs> Go for it, come on. <laughs> it's yours, you can touch it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, you're uh, able to find that tripod. Yeah. A lot of people will say sit on your sits bones, but they're shaped like around, so you'd have to tense too much to stay on top of that. You, you just roll back if you relax. So what I want you to do is a slight, ever so slight tip onto your pubic bone. Now what I'm hoping you have is in your front, your pubic bone, and in your back, your two sits bones as a tripod. Pretend you have a marble in the middle, you're trying to keep it in the middle. You don't want it to roll back to your sits bones or roll towards your pubic bone, okay? So normally, I would have to customize this for each of you, but I'm just gonna roll through some of the basics, okay? Once you've got that, you've got your feet and your thighs are some of the foundation. Now your pelvis is vertical, and then you wanna get your rib cage. If you notice, you know, all of us might be different. Some of us may be slumped, some of us may be here. You just wanna stack your rib cage on your pelvis and your shoulders. So picture from your pelvis to the tops of your shoulder as a soda can. If it's after five, it could be a beer can, whatever y'all want. But um, then you just want it because there's a lot of research about the intradominal pressure to give you that natural uh, core stability. So once you've got, you're just stacking blocks. Everything you needed to know you learned in kindergarten. You're stacking the pelvic block on that tripod and those legs and feet on the ground. You're stacking the rib cage on that. And then everybody do this with me. Shrug your shoulders towards your ears. Obviously, that's not where I want you, but you want to turn your pinkies towards the front, gently glide the shoulders down and back. Now, if anyone's taking a yoga class, that's Tadasana pose, like you just are there, okay? Now, double check that you didn't arch back too much and that your sternum didn't come with you. So you're going to take your thumb at your base of your sternum, like right where your bra starts, and then your um, pinky at your belly button or umbilicus, and then just let that drop and stack and make sure shoulders are still back and then just derotate your arms. Now you'd be set up to kind of use the computer or whatnot. But there's one thing I didn't tell you. Once you're there, the best thing to do is let go and relax. You wanna relax into your pelvis, relax your abdomen, relax your thighs. I mean, well, relax your legs, but your thighs are gonna have a little tone to them because that's where your weight accepting. But what people normally do is they get themselves positioned and then they hold it. So no, and I'm not going to tell you to, you know, it's hard to say relax, but maybe just sink or root into the foundation that you establish some good alignment. Okay. Now what you do it from there, like if I scoot back a little bit, um, I'm kind of, you know, perched and I have weight through my legs and now I can lean forward a little bit more to approach my computer or whatnot. Now, if you guys can see this, this is a really cool thing my husband built. This is a little bit too high for me, but my kids are six foot, six four, my husband's six four. And this is, I don't sit at this like 12 hours a day. I'm a therapist, I'm up and around, but I just do a little bit here. Um, so, but this has to be standard for all of us. But ideally I would want it a little bit lower, like 90 degrees or a little lower at the elbows if we're gonna start adding in, you know, the desk and the computer and where that goes. You guys follow me so far? So all we really learned is how- Can I see your feet? I'm sorry? I wanna see your feet again. How are you, do you have both of them flat or is one like propped up? Really good question. See the one in the back, Jenna? Yeah. That's my heels up. I'm sort of resting on the ball of my foot. The other one's planted. Okay. Okay, and then be, be sure you switch. I mean, once you're here, now Georgia, bring it up a little bit. We're gonna show a little bit more of the hole. You don't have to be static here. What we learned just now was the static sitting posture because that's from which where you have to move, okay? That's your home base. That's where you're gonna do your computer. But now I wanna make a point of this. If I wanna reach my water, I don't wanna like lean back and reach my water like that, okay? Mm -hmm. Or reach my glasses or my wine if it's after five, you know? So if I'm leaning forward, I'm accepting weight to my legs. Oh, and then I shift my weight back by pushing through my feet. Oh, I just got some workout. 
I mean, I'm just using my legs really well with, can you guys do that? Like put your hands on your thighs. Yeah. Keep the alignment in your back. Pretend you've got a rod up your back, but relax. And then just shift your body weight forward. You might feel the tension in your thighs. Hold it there for a moment. Shift a little bit more. Draw your belly in. Push through your feet, but don't let yourself move. Just push through your feet. Do you guys feel what that feels like? Feel like your legs working? Now push yourself back a little bit and, and right back to that well-aligned posture and balanced posture you found. So all day, every day, just to reach things, that's how it should be done. Oh, and P.S., you're getting some workout instead of getting the, you know, just everything being all flabby, okay? So also less stress and strain to your neck and because a lot of people do it from their back and with a shrugged shoulder with a forward head, all righty? So does that make sense? Any questions on that? Quick questions on that so far? Are we good? We're good. Okay. We have a lot of questions, but I'm going to let you finish and then we'll okay. see if we can step out. Okay. So then what I would like you to do is know this. You have to take breaks and we could go into today. I don't have time to talk about how to stand well, but basically you'd be doing the same thing you found with your pelvis, but you'd have to add in the legs. Maybe that's for another time. And I love, um, I don't have any association with any chairs or the very desk, but we use the very desk at work. It's really easy to go up and down so that you can use it in sitting or in standing. And again, we can talk about that another time, but I'd like to get into some exercises that are very simple and we need to move. So you want to put um, an alarm on your um, computer or your phone to just tell yourself to get up or again, starting to go to reality versus ideal. If you're literally like, can't get up, let's just at least do this together. I'm going to give you three or four things. I'm going to let Veronica cut me off before um, I'd like to get through four, but if not, we'll go with just a couple, okay? So everyone knows about shoulder rolls, but I don't think, in my experience for being a PT over 20 years, people don't typically use them and do them well. So I want everybody to bring your shoulders forward. If anyone's done any contemporary dance, it's sort of like, you can, or, you know, Bob Fosse is all about the scapula, if you know anything about dance, but anyway, shoulders forward, shoulders up by the ears, Shoulders way back. This is where a lot of people end up just doing like straight versus way back. Like let your heart shine way back. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Then shoulder blades all the way down, all the way down. So if you imagine pens, you got a lot of your designers out there, imagine pencils and your visual, you're creating complete big circles with those pencils that are coming out your shoulders versus D's. So you're creating O's versus D's. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Feels good. obviously, obviously about a minute that way. And then a little mini that. massage. It's a mini yeah. massage, right? People, people miss the back part and that's where it feels the best because it opens up the pecs and it makes you use your upper back muscles, which in the computer world, da, 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 we're not using enough, right? I got to tell you, my back fat is actually really helpful in that process. It's a <laughs> massage in the back. So I'm going to have to oh. hang on to some of that. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Not nice segue, because I did want to tell you that um, even if you have a well-designed chair or you don't, um, if you notice that I was perching on the chair, we'll get back to the exercise in a minute, notice how there was space here. I'm okay with that, but the designers of the chairs will tell you you're not using the full chair if you don't go to the back. So if you, if you have a well-designed chair and you can sit all the way back, this one is lovely, but for me to reach the height of this and have my feet on the floor, which Feet on the floor is an absolute, you must have that. You can use some of your well-designed pillows. You don't need it, just bed pillows, I don't care. It happened, this is my favorite one with the fox on it. Um, you know, you can just build this. You can use a couple of them if you have to, no big deal. And then that may, allows me to have my feet on the floor and feel a back because I wanna have a back. Just FYI. That's so the other exercise we must do is a hip flexor stretch and there's several ways to do it but no matter what I don't care if you're sitting perfectly all the time with the most perfect chair it's still probably too much of sedentary that we're at right now working from home so um, the hip flexor is in the front like your hip crease right where you crease when you sit so there's several ways to do it I want to do one in the chair that we all should be able to kind of do just make sure you have something to hold on to and if you have a chair that's with rollers, make sure it doesn't slip out from underneath you, okay? So I'm just gonna turn to the side and I'm going to walk my, uh, Georgia, can you aim it down just a little bit? Thank you, that's good. I'm gonna walk my leg back, right? And I'm up on my toe in the back and I'm gonna tuck my tailbone towards the knee in the front. So if you really tuck under, 
And Veronica, for you, you're going to try to flatten that curve in your back to the best of your ability. It's okay if you don't totally oh, that. Yeah. That's your goal. <laughs> so I want everyone to push through their feet, but really tuck under and start to wiggle that back leg back even more. Do you feel any kind of stretch here? Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. I also and got a great like pop it. in my back. And I, and I will <laughs> say, don't do it if you fear that you're going to overstrain anything. Obviously, you know, I don't want to hurt anybody, but I would like you to experience it if you can. Now, if you feel like you can, draw your belly in and arch yourself back, like just lean back, maybe throw an arm up. You can pretend, you know, get your inner dance. Georgia, can you get it up more, please? I would love to get a shot of everybody doing this yeah, at home. Yeah, so just <laughs> let your a little down. Oh. Let your inner dancer shine, okay? Just like that, reach back. Okay, so that'll open up the front. Let's do the other side. But I'm gonna do the other side. You guys can continue on the chair. I'm gonna show you my favorite way of doing it, okay? So just get one of those pillows that you don't mind being on the floor. Now you're gonna have to lower it, please. And you're gonna drop one knee, and this is if you don't have knee issues, or even if you don't. And this is my favorite way. You're gonna tuck under. Now, already I'm humbled because my left side is super tight. But it's not about my issues today. It's just about <laughs> So I lunge forward a little bit and just just notice this, everybody watch this, one of the most um, biggest mistakes people make. If I arch my back, look how far I can go. No, no bueno, okay? I didn't get into my actual muscles that I wanna stretch. If I tuck first and perhaps tighten my glutes and I go forward, that's all I got. I feel a maximum stretch here. So I'm holding this position for a minute so you can get an idea of what the proper way to do it is. And you can add an arm to lift up if you want. Can we lift it up, please? So if you're going to add the arm, you want to reach for the ceiling. Down a little bit lower, Jordan. Reach for the ceiling, lower. Good. And then keep tucking forward, keep lower. And just get that stretch. You can even go to the side and get a little stretch in the, in the side body. So you have a choice to do it from your chair. If you just need a real quick one, and if it works for you, or go down on one knee, which I think can be a little more efficient as long as you don't have knee issues. Alrighty, so the other thing is too, is um, Veronica, do we have time for one more? One more. One more. One more. So, so this is the most important one then um, to add with these, is your basic sit to stands, okay? You can call them squats or whatnot, but I'm pretty sure that all of us can do this and tap our bottoms to the chair, or if you don't feel strong enough, fully sit, that's okay. And stand all the way up, squeeze your bottom, but make sure when you stand, it's vertical. It's not here or here. It's everything stacked together, which I'm sure you'll all do perfectly because you're all designers and you know how to see symmetry. So you're gonna stand up, squeeze, down, squeeze. And I would, my goal for you guys, for most people, I would say 50 times a day, but you guys are, we say at least 100 for you guys. Oh, I thought we could less. No, no these, are, oh. these are, these are. It's a gift. It's a gift to you, a gift. It is a gift. You're a gift. This is so invaluable. So I hope everybody in the group, you know, reach out to Dawn. She's in the group as well. If you guys have questions, throw them into comments. Um, we are going to get to a few questions before the show is over today because there's a lot of questions coming in right now. So that's good, but I wanted to get over to Jana because what we've just seen is wellness as a, as a design element, as a tool, and we've seen wellness in action. And now we have kind of brought the two together with Jana's own personal journey as a, as a designer, but also as just a real exercise buff. Uh, I do call you frequently the queen of Peloton. So Jana, I know you have a little presentation, presentation ready for us as well uh, to kind of help people understand what you did in your home and why you created this, well, this space for yourself. Take it away. Yeah. Don, I have to say that was glorious, that stretching. I didn't get my stretching in today, so that was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, so I... I, you know, I've exercised my entire life um, in various ways, and um, last year I bought a Peloton, <laughs> and I would not let my husband put it in the basement, which you are seeing right now. Um, that's, this is a before picture. It was, it was 
too beautiful of a piece of equipment. So it went into my master bedroom, which was fine and dandy uh, until everybody got locked down. And then all of a sudden I was faced with three kids staring at me while I'm trying to get my workout in. Um, it no longer became a me time. It was an everybody time. So uh, we started looking at reutilizing our basement, which we had not before. We had this space, and um, so I did it in uh, the one room challenge, um, made over this our basement into a true home gym. Um, and then there's looking uh, outside, looking in there, and then you can go to the next one. So you saw the before. <laughs> Yeah, and there's the after. So w I really wanted a dedicated space to work out, um, to feel motivated in, um, to relax in, to get away in. My um, it, that's my kind of sanctuary. That's where I can clear the memory, the the foggy memory, and um, just have my my me time, which is I think such a huge benefit that. Most people do not take advantage of that me time. I think Katie said the other day, she feels guilty for having a little me time. Um, that is not me. <laughs> I know I need that me time. Um, I know I'm a better mom. I'm a better designer. I'm a better person at the end of the day for fitting in, even if it's a 15 minute workout. So I really wanted to transform this space into kind of our sanctuary. So, so it started with our gym. And then <laughs> the project grew because once I realized um, after I started the gym project that I was going to be staring into my backyard, that was going to be uh, not motivating at all and <laughs> very depressing. So the project actually grew probably three times as much. Um, so I really wanted to incorporate the indoor, outdoor integration um, design elements. So when I'm working out, I can stare at a pretty place. Um, I can watch my kids play out there on the playground. So it was really um, tackling multiple uh, issues with our house at the same time. Um, but yeah, so there's, there's the after. Wow. wow, that's gorgeous. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So um, now I have my, my, my away space, my sanctuary. Uh, I go down there um, and my kids don't bother me down there, thank goodness. <laughs> um, and, you know, I think it's just everybody wants to hang out there. And it, this goes beyond just the physical aspects. I think this is, was just such a, um, this was a mental uh, aspect of my life, too, that we really needed, that we really, uh, I think, honed in on when we were stuck at home. Um, and, you know, so I think... Um, it, it turned out good and I'm so happy that we did that because we're going to get so much use out of that space. And it's, it wasn't just, it wasn't just an investment into our house. It was really an investment into, you know, our future, our health and our kids. Um, so the whole family gets to use this space, um, which is priceless. And you know, you're, you're doing something very interesting because right now you've got, we talked, touched on this a little bit earlier, you've got a housing market that is you know, just just going crazy, and and every uh, shed is being put on the market for half a million bucks because people can get it. And I think the underlying reason for that is people suddenly are woke up a few weeks ago and said, "I need more room. I can't take it anymore." And the, but there's some real risk associated with doing that. Uh, the interest mortgage rates are low right now, but they won't be low in a year from now. So if you're suddenly realizing that now COVID's gone and you have sort of a much bigger house available again, sure, great. But what if you can't afford that realistically and then try to sell it again when mortgage rates are up? So there's, there's a lot of issues that can come with this. And what you've done is precisely the, the, the I, in my mind, the, the right direction. You've looked for those ancillary spacey, spaces, the you know, sort of the, the neglected basement or that spare bedroom or any kind of ancillary area or an outdoor area and even enclosed part of an outdoor area. The, the spaces in American homes are almost always there to create something that is so, so beautiful, you know, that you really don't have to, um, you could have said, let's move. We need a bigger house because I need private space. 
but you didn't. So, yeah. and and you created this this wonderful sanctuary, um, you know. So, and I, I think that's a big message for your clients too. And I, I kind of wanted to to ask you a little bit about the overarching. Obviously, you're somebody that's so aware of wellness and the importance of wellness in your life. How do you go about uh, connecting with your clients? How do you um, tee up the conversation? Do you wait for them to kind of take you there or do you take them there? Yeah, I mean, I think I, I every client's a little bit different and, you know, there's always that process of, you know, the dating process with your client where you're getting to know each other. Um, and once I kind of learn about their life, their lifestyle, I, you know, I start asking different questions. Uh, for instance, I had a client that was an avid marathon runner, um, exclusively ran outside. And so we decided to put in the Mr. Steam um, shower for him. And so I think each client's a little bit different. I've got a commercial project right now that I'm working on. And um, after talking with them and looking at the location, they've got uh, a bunch of trails behind the building. And they had talked about, you know, taking lunch breaks and going and walking on these trails. And so we decided to incorporate a shower into one of the restrooms so that if they wanted to go out and walk the trails during lunch, they could come back, freshen up, go back to their desks, which we also uh, changed out to the sit stand desk. So it doesn't have to be, um, you don't have to buy a Peloton. You don't have to be, you know, doing hit classes. It's those small little movements during your day that I think make a huge difference. So it's really just learning. Uh, it's about learning about your client and, and what their lifestyle is, what they want it to be. Somebody might have a beautiful sunroom that could be a perfect place to do yoga. Um, so it's just, and then I put those little buzzes in their ear, like, you know, hey, this would be a great place for a, a yoga studio or like the, um, like the commercial office. I'm like, you know, what do you think about putting in a shower here so you got, your employees can take a shower, you're not all sweaty and stinky for the rest of the day. So it's like those types of little things um, that you just, you kind of really listen and learn a lot um, about each, each project. So that's kind of how. Well, I think it also too, you know, it, it definitely speaks to Wow, that's a horrible echo. Um, it, it definitely speaks to the current need too. And you know, with, with gyms not being open, with spas and, uh, not being open or as accessible, or just, just you know, society not wanting really to be in that environment around a bunch of hot, sweaty people in, the, in a small, in a small enclosed space. I mean, that's there's just a certain uh, a, a certain thing about that that's no longer appealing. I love the way that you transform the space. And looking at the comments too, the yellow stairs are getting uh, uh, are lots of love <laughs> for those yellow stairs. And I yeah, love the, you know, obviously the color extended right on outside but you know I, I love how you incorporated the the mural behind and uh you know of course the techie in the group here i was seeing that going oh is that a screen and it right. easily could be which would take that peloton experience and even expand it even further so you know i there's so many different things that you can do in a space like that but then also just how versatile that space is too i mm -hmm. mean there's a treadmill and you've got your bike in there but that could easily be transitioned to something else and be transitioned back and you've got great visibility into the backyard I don't know about you, but I don't have kids. I have a dog and it, totally different scenario. But, you know, I do yoga practice at home and similar to you with that wide open door. But if he's outside, I'm always distracted because he's, he's kind of, he's out there and he can get around. But if I had had that enclosed space out there, it would be so nice just to be able to be, to look out and have that, you know, in, indoors out kind of thing, but not have to worry about him. And so I love how you've got, the kids are kind of handled and you can still be connected to them, but still be totally focused on what you're yeah, exactly. doing. And I think just yeah. for like mental health, you know, when you're, you're, you're trying to achieve physical health, but the mental health goes along with it too. And I, it just seems as though you've just totally complimented both of those. And uh, I, I just, I love the space. Come, yeah. I, I want to come and ride your, for your Peloton. Yeah, <laughs> come on over. No, you get your own. But not you 120 miles. Own, you can have your own Peloton. No, wait a minute. I, we have to invite Peloton into the talk. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Because we like stuff. So Next. We'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to work on that. Uh, Martha, there's there's a question coming come through from, and I'm hoping I'm saying this name right, uh, Noel Vincent. Uh, she's wrapping up her own personal master uh, bath with Mr. Steam and aromatherapy. She has existing damp rated recessed pans. Is there a retrofit option that you know of to use with uh, chromotherapy lamps? And um, well, the next question goes to everybody again. What colors would engage you in the morning and relax you at night? 
Oh, that, that, that's easy. Okay. We do have an actual chromotherapy. If she's considering redoing her master bath she's right doing now? now. Yes. Okay. So we do have an actual uh, eye dream package or she can get an actual uh, chromotherapy package that could be mounted on the ceiling. And I got to tell you, it's the Roy G. Biv. Some of you may not know what that is, but it's how we used to tell colors, right? Red, orange, yellow, right, green, the whole uh, color spectrum. And on the left side, the Roy, uh, the Roy colors, right? Red, orange, yellow, mm -hmm. were the most activating, uh, invigorating colors. Those are the ones you take in the morning. And then you get the blues and then the, the lavenders, and that's what you take at night. You can take that with steam and, and go to sleep and get a wonderful night's rest. Because a lot of people are ha uh, having issues sleeping. So steam and color relaxation and a lavender uh, uh, aromatherapy, I think you believe she's getting, uh, that will really do the trick. I have a question. So I, I, I don't know. I, I've read studies that blue light at nighttime is actually bad. Is that? There are, certain kind, there are different kinds of, of, of light. Uh, this one is the one that, the, the bad one is the one that it's emitted by your your controls, your PCs. Okay. Your Electronics. Electronics, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so this is the pure light coming from like the, the breakdown of the prism. That, that's what you get, okay. pure light. And Jennifer Bertrand is asking about more information. She likes to specify it more often. And I know some of uh, uh, Jennifer's work also impacts um, personal wellness, people with, with some, some health issues, uh, veterans, and so forth. And so she wants to bid on it on using more steam more often, but doesn't feel educated well enough. I think she needs to be on a design house tour, personally, what I'm thinking. But, <laughs> Uh, can she talk to a regional rep, or does it make more sense we'd, to go we'd through love to, We'd love to hook, it up with, hook her up with one of our regionals. We got the Perfect. most knowledgeable regionals, and I'll be happy to talk to her, too. So Perfect. if we can get her address and, and give us that information, we'll make sure we, we reach out to you, Jennifer. We'll, we'll connect you guys. Okay. Martha's got a great, uh, she's got a great brochure that I got on one of the Design Hounds tour and it has all the benefits of it. I can't tell you how often I use that when I'm doing a bathroom all the time. <laughs> See? It actually it. came up with one of my regionals and I were just having drinks after five and we said, you know, how many benefits do we actually have with this? Then we, we started labeling them. Not, it came up to over 50. And then after dealing with our lawyers, it came down to 40. You know, some things <laughs> like hangovers and stuff, they weren't too comfortable with us mentioning. <laughs> but it's great for hangovers. It really is. <laughs> I like it. And, and you guys can post all of that in the, in the group chat. So very important for, for our panelists today. Anything you guys want to share with viewers? We'll get to additional questions. Um, uh, in the comments later on for you guys, or feel free to reach out to Martha or to John or to Jana directly. Wait. They're all in the group. Right? Right? I just wanted to say one thing, just FYI, whenever you are doing a stretch, like the mm -hmm. one I showed you, um, the research shows holding 30 seconds is the best. Like, Really, the best is holding, I think, 30 minutes and doing it, but that's not realistic. Seriously? So, but you hold maybe, the pose for 30 minutes? No. Oh. No, what I'm saying is some of the research, so a marginal improvement in uh, flexibility of a muscle if you hold it like 30 minutes, So what there's, but not much difference than 30 seconds. So 30 seconds is kind of the gauge. But I'll tell you, 30 seconds is much longer than one thing. So actually look at your phone or something because you think, oh, I'm done. You know? <laughs> so um, I just wanted to make that point. Don, how long did you say? How often do we need to be doing? How long? How much? Uh, like as far every as hour? Stretching or? Two? Yeah, stretching. Or getting stretching. Up. Um, I think you should move every like 30 minutes or something. So that can be a, a couple of sit to stands or a stretch. Um, I think, do, but typically doing, let's say that hip flexor stretch, even if you get three in, in a day, you know, that's, that's really saying something, but I would say, especially after workouts, like your Peloton, or if anyone, that's, that's more of a, like a given, you have to do it then. Yeah. And then if you're sitting all day, um, you know, every 30 minutes or so move, that could be a stretch or it could be sit to stand, or it could be, uh, you know, just getting up, 
don't get up and go get the ice cream, but go get and get water. So you can, and it all goes back to sleep too. We could have a whole other talk about sleep. We do a lot of work with um, people who have trouble sleeping. And, and oh. oh God, I'm coming, I'm, I'm, I'm in next week. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that too. <laughs> I do have another question for you, uh, Martha, and that's kind of like, because a lot of people know you uh, in the group, as you can tell by the, uh, you know, all the accolades that you'll be reading here. But what's new in Mr. Steam? What, what kind of new tech, what are we getting? What's coming up in 2021? You, you beat me to it. Whoever asked that question deserves Sorry. the world. <laughs> <laughs> <Like, laughs> <laughs> well, we, we, you know, we're always innovating and percolating what's going on. So what is the latest, right? Some, some of the things is, uh, uh, Alexa, turn on Mr. Steam, right? Voice control. That, that's really happening. That, 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 that's new. We have a new uh, 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 designer finishes now with a linear steam head. So now you can match the color and the tone of, of whatever shower uh, you, you're designing. We have a wireless control that you can, you know, longer, if you have an, an impetus, so you can't attach it to the wall. You can now just peel and stick and, and put it on, uh, on the wall itself. So we really have a, a lot of innovative. Uh, and the one thing that we do have coming up, which I'm going to reveal to you right here, right now, is a electronic shower valve that will be able to be used with steam. So you can have your control, your ice steam control, and you can decide whether you want to have your shower or your steam or your, your, your uh, chromotherapy or your aromatherapy or your music. Everything will be controlled with a flat screen from Mr. Steam. So you no longer need the, the valves and everything outside uh, in the shower. You can just have your Mr. Steam control, shower, water. Katie, how does that make you feel? Uh, that, uh, you know, warm all over. <laughs> uh <-huh>. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny. We had somebody over looking at, at, at our kitchen in one of our bathrooms last week. And, you know, we live in a little cabin in the mountains. He's like, you need a steam shower. It's like, you know what? I do need a steam shower. You're right. <laughs> see, coming your way. Coming yeah, your way. See. No, but you I think it's just. It, no people. Yeah, no, no, no. But I think it's just so front of mind for people these days. And I think, you know, especially like looking at comments, the respiratory health and all of that. It's, it's so cool. And I, I love that it's all integrated too, Martha. That was, uh, Veronica beat me to that question, but I was, I was definitely interested in that. Now, coming in from the tech side of the world, does that mean that that could also be integrated into automation systems as well? Yep, oh, perfect. Sure, sure. We, we work into a home automation systems, if whatever path they're using, turn on okay. your steam. And this is, there. so the noob question for me, uh, how long is it, does it, is there a time that it takes for the steam to come, for it to come up to heat or is it, is it on demand? That, that's actually a very good question. Well, steam uh, boils at 212 degrees, right? So you have water at 70, 75 degrees, it's gonna take X number of, of, of minutes to start steaming. However, there are a few things you can do to, it's usually five to 10 minutes before the room gets heated. So you could do pre-start it when you're in the bedroom from your app. We do have an app that you can turn it on. You can preset it on a clock that's built into the control and you can say, okay, I wanna get it at seven o'clock in the morning. So by the time you get there at 7.10 or 7.15, it's already nice and warm. You can also have your wife turn it off for you, as I do. <laughs> uh, but but there, there are many ways you can tell Alexa to turn it on, right? So you can preheat it. And there's also a, 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 a option, which is not very echo friendly. So I don't, I don't, I don't, advice to have it. It's called an express steam or a quick heat, but that means that you have to have a coil on all the time. And it, you know what, ultimately it's going to take you maybe uh, four minutes to eight minutes for the room to heat up. So you're not saving much, but I recommend that you do either program the time clock or do the Alexa or do your app and get it going before you, you, you know, you can be driving yeah. on the 405 by the time I'm almost close to my exit, I can turn it on and I'll, I'll be have a nice steam shower when I get you home. You mean when you go from the 405 to the 10, to the 15, to the 82, to the... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. If you're in California, you got to take the whole... <laughs> you yeah. take lots of it <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> Nothing. Okay. And then, and one, then one more question. Uh, I just wanted to, this one is, I don't need to feel guilty using my Mr. Steam. Not, I mean, 
my theoretical Mr. Oh. Steam. I don't need to feel guilty about water waste in my steam shower. You, you, you know what? What is a typical shower uh, put out in terms of gallons per minute, Jana? Jana? Any idea? I don't know, but I know it's a lot. It, it, it like 20, anywhere isn't it 20 or something? To, well, typically per minute, it's about two, two to four gallons per minute, right? Okay. Two gallons. Yep. Uh, we use uh, one and a half gallons for the uh, most common generator for half an hour. So yeah, that's imagine how many people have put the the the, the steam on uh, the hot water on trying to get steam, and it, it, you know they'll, they'll be using uh, tons and tons of of, of water uh, instead of of just half a an out and a gallon and a half of of water for for a half hour session. So that's so cool. So it, so it's guilt free, guilt free wellness. Guilt -free. I love it. Yeah. On all counts. On all Excellent. counts. So we're way over time, but I do. I'm getting the same question over and over again about that that panel that also runs the shower. <laughs> ah, electronic shower valve. The electronic shower valve. Yeah, excuse I, me I call for it? not getting that right. I was struggling with functional manual therapy all day. Now, <laughs> well, come on, Veronica. Come on. Come on. Great, Veronica. You know, great. It's it the ESV. Mar Marsha McDonald wants to know if this is for retrofit too. So oh, yeah. is it embedded huh? into the shower or do you need a special shower or what do you have to do? Regular shower? Uh, it's called Spa Tool. Huh? Is that available? When is that available? Is that available now? That will become available at uh, beginning of, of next okay. year. Good. When, when all good things are so going to happen. Because we shouldn't be launching anything in <laughs> yes, 2020. 2021. Get that right. Let's get rid of 2020. <laughs> we'll just be on standstill. So, so Katie, you had, you had one so, last wait, little wait message for, for us. I do. Are we, can, can I drop it? Yeah, you can. Oh, goody, goody, goody. All right, all right. So, so guys and gals, um, over on the AV side of the world, um, as pandemic hit, we started up a virtual online yoga group. Um, and we decided to put it right in the middle of the week at a very inconvenient time, which required us all to absolutely commit, commit to ourselves. Uh, 4 p.m. Eastern is our AV yoga group. And we've got about 15 women right now who are practicing as part of the group in the last few weeks. Uh, we've had some splinters go off and people are starting their own private practice with the yoga instructor doing form checks, that kind of thing. Don, you'd love it. Um, we have, we found out that uh, many of our ladies were cheating their chaturangas. And if you know what a chaturanga is, if you cheat you that, cheat on a chaturanga. I do not cheat on a chaturanga. It is bad, 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 bad. I bad. treat a lot of yoga <laughs> teachers too and try to teach them. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, so Veronica and and Florence and I were, were, were uh, masterminding and scheming uh, the other week. And we thought, you know what, we really need to open this up to the KBI group. So our gift to you, if uh, those uh, of you listening in or uh, catching this later, if you are interested in uh, pulling together a KBI group yoga session, this would be done via Zoom. Uh, it's very low cost, probably think like in the $15, $20 per session. Um, you don't need to worry about people watching you because if they're watching you, they're not doing their practice. They're not doing their practice. They shouldn't be there. So it's, you don't get that creepy vibe whatsoever but what you do get is an hour of just this great practice with my yoga instructor here in Red Lodge her name is Maddie Ringer she's got over 750 hours of, of instruction she's amazing and she just have this she's got this incredibly soothing voice and and how she's able to, to walk you through a yoga practice without being next to you it, it don't worry if you don't know how she'll tell you put your left hand here put your right hand here put your foot here bend you know look at the sky and all these things and, and you're in a pretzel and you don't even realize it it's amazing and I'll tell you that it's we've kind of created a corporate wellness program around it so it's my gift to my uh, to my team uh, to join as often as they'd like to and if they want to pick up a private then I'm then I'm also comping them for that as well my view on it as an employer is if my, if my people are happy and healthy that the work that they're doing is going to be exceptional and and it is and we're losing weight, we're getting strong, and we're building confidence, but we're building a community, and it's really cool, and it's all based around a rubber mat on the floor for an hour once a week. So if you're interested in doing this, we've got two options right now that are available, um, and we're just kind of like drop in the comments at this point. Let us know which one you're interested in. There is a Tuesday at 2 Mountain, which would be 1 Pacific, uh, two, three, four, four, four Eastern, uh, or Thursday at noon. Again, mountain, so 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. You can figure out the central and all of that. Cool. Um, well, and we'll drop that information again yep. into comments uh, as yeah. well and uh, and get that in front of people. So it's all about wellness. We're going to make KBI Group just a whole movement when we get done with <laughs> everything. Uh, Martha, again, reminder, everybody that commented today, uh, it's cutting off now, so you can't do it anymore. Get a row from Mr. Steam. So... And go ahead, go ahead, model yes, it one model more it. time. 
Now do, I will do, do, actually do, 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 be able to do, do this. Everybody gets oh, it. Oh, oh nice. Oh, nice. So oh. cozy. <laughs> Mr. Steam Rope. And we are back with Mr. Steam on October 8th to talk about the other half of this conversation, and that's the emotional side of wellness and how design impacts the way we live. We'll see you guys there. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Veronica. Bye, everyone. Nice Bye.